All right, guys, hang on. It is about to get really nerdy and really geeky. We are going to take a deep dive into one of my old notes I made on how I set up multiple GPUs on an Asus Prime motherboard. How I went in and configured the BIOS so it would recognize the GPUs so I could actually use them for GPU mining. Yeah, this is in the weeds. This is down in the details. It was made about three years ago, back when I was learning all the mining stuff, getting in there, getting into the BIOS, how to configure stuff, how to get GPUs to work on motherboards, etc. how to get them recognized, how to get the right adapters, the drivers, etc. to work well, uh, not only with Windows, but just to work with the actual algorithms for mining GPUs, uh, mostly at the time it was ETH, Ethermine, ETH, ETH, Ethereum, ETHash, all that crap. Uh, the funny thing is, the most interesting thing in another video I made, I had an old ASRock, A-S-R-O-C, hey, a motherboard from 2013, 2014. I built a gaming PC. And uh, boy, that card, that motherboard was awesome. I could plug in. I think I had uh, da, 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 three, four PCIe slots or maybe three PCIe slots on that motherboard, probably three. And I was able to uh, use a, a PCIe GPU extenders. And then I put in a splitter on the third slot, like a one to four. So I easily plugged in uh, six GPUs, mostly. 1660 GPUs and the motherboard of all things with the older BIOS, the ASRock, boom, recognized all of them. They all came up in the Windows Device Manager under display adapter without a problem. The problem I found when I got the newer motherboards, like the uh, Asus Prime Fit 590s, like with the past couple of years at the time, 2021, right? Six, seven years later, those are the ones I had to configure and kick just to get it to recognize more than one, more than two, more than three, up to six GPUs was a pain in the butt. So go figure, right? So this is a good way to learn crap. That's why I say the CPU mining, the crypto mining, the GPU mining for me, at first it was like, oh man, get rich. I'm going to buy a Lambo. Yeah, bull crap. It's all crap, buddy. The best way to make wealth, build wealth is long time in the market, Time in the market versus time in the market, index funds, low to zero cost management fees. Uh, you can get them on Vanguard, Fidelity, invest in the S&P 500, grow stocks, index funds for the win over time, investing a couple bucks each month, compounding. That's how you build your wealth. There's the answer, the secret sauce to life. Compounding is the ninth wonder of the world, right? Look into it. Crypto mining gambling, uh, buying Tesla stock, uh, buying Nvidia stock. It's all speculation. It's all gambling. You're going to risk it all. But uh, yeah. All right, let's get into it. So point being, it's all about learning, right? You're not going to make the money. You're not going to make quick, get, quick, get rich quick stuff. So for me, you end up learning a lot of tech. You learn a lot of tech about uh, the hardware. You get your hands on the hardware. And as I always said before in the other videos, you almost cover three areas of the tech world. You cover the hands-on hardware configuration, system engineering. You're building a system. You're configuring it. which components go with which components, which are compatible, which are the most optimal. Uh, yeah, and how to get them to work. Uh, next one is system administration. Going into the BIOS, going into the Windows uh, uh, local registry, stuff like that, and tweaking stuff to get it to work. That's your system admin. Set up Accounts, uh, setting up accounts, setting up display adapters, installing drivers. That's your admin part. Programming wise, you deal with some of the stuff like setting up your batch file. It's not hardcore engineering, but again, you are actually in there messing with uh, minor software. You're messing with the batch scripts. You're kind of configuring stuff. You can actually write your own scripts to do stuff. So you are covering almost all three levels of the tech computer world. And you go in an interview and, you know, Half, uh, look halfway decent, show up not drunk or high, and you may get a job. And you most likely know more than the idiots interviewing you, trust me. <laughs> yeah, trust me on that one. 
All right, let's go. Let's jump into it. This is just for fun. This will kind of give you a nice warm fuzzy. And it should apply to most motherboards. The concept is the same. The specifics are to the Asus Prime uh, Z590 V5 BIOS uh, for setting up multiple GPUs. I'm just going to go through my notes. You can screenshot this. I don't care. This is just for me. I can uh, frontal log this on a video and save it for later because I may lose my notes. You just never know. And if anything, I educate somebody on how to do this, where to look. I didn't know you had to go into the BIOS and tweak all this crap. You think it would just work. No, you got to go in and customize this crap. Just don't know that. But that's how you end up learning, right? So you go in and you play around and you start learning all this tech stuff and it makes you a better person. And it's fun. It becomes a hobby. Like I said, it's not get rich quick. It's like, hey, I'm actually learning something. This is fun. It occupies my time. And it, it's just, it just becomes a hobby. So here we go. Let's jump into it. Asus Prime uh, Z590 BIOS. How am I going to set up so I recognize multiple GPUs? The problem being it was only recognizing one GPU and it wouldn't boot up otherwise. If I had more installed, it was just confused, right? So I had to go tweak the BIOS settings. All right. Okay. We're going to read together. It's like story time. Okay. I got the Asus Prime Z590V to boot with three GPUs. One, 360Ti and two AMD 6600 XTs. Here's what I did, boys and girls. So it's a story time. Get the kids, wake the dog, phone the neighbors. Let's get into it. Number one, uh, yeah, power down. Only plug in the two GPUs in the first two PCIe slots. Make sure all boots up into Windows with your SATA drive. You must have a SATA drive. I had a USB, uh, USB drive booting previously. Uh, I used to say that I guess it's the boot order you also specify on the BIOS. Again, this is my first time through it when I wrote these notes and having trial and error. There may be simpler ways, but this is what I got to work for me for all you uh, armchair quarterbacks who know everything. So anyway, this is just what I got to hang in there. Uh, again, these are free videos. No one's making you watch. Uh, porn's free too. Go watch porn. All right. Anyway, once it boots, shut down. Once it boots, shut down. Okay. Now unplug the SATA from the motherboard. Power up. Should boot into BIOS setup. Confirm it does. Now in BIOS, here's what we do. Now once you're in the BIOS, press F5 to load optimized settings. Press F9 for search. Search for 4G. It has to be enabled. You have to enable it. And again, this could be across multiple motherboards, multiple operating uh, BIOS settings, uh, systems. I don't know. All, the concepts are the same. The specifics may be very uh, different depending on what you have. Next, you want to search for PCI. All right, once you do that, you're going to see these uh, PCIe 16 underscore one link speed, Gen 2, PCIe speed, Gen 2. These are the settings. Power on by PCIe enabled. Uh, next, you want to search my indents are off. That's what's screwing me up. I'm not going to worry about it. You guys get the gist. Those are subcategories. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Just for grins. Let's see if I'm good at this, guys. On the fly. On the fly. Formatting. Woo! Can I do it? I clicked it. Nothing happened. <laughs> ah. Oh, come on. That's supposed to move it over. Anyway, let's get going. I was going to, I don't, let's see, let's try tab. It's just not, it's not letting me change. Oh, well, I am not good with uh, Macintosh pages. Sorry, it just showed right there. All right, these are your settings right here. All right, we're right here. Next uh, five is search for HD. You can search in your BIOS. There's a little search window in most BIOS settings. It's gold. It'll help you find stuff instead of trying to click around, find all these sub menus, blah, blah, blah. Go to the search bar. It'll show you everything in their BIOS menus and options once you do a search. All right, next search for HD, HD audio disabled. Search for number six, CSM. Launch CSM disabled. This was actually a gold. You need to know this one. This one actually saved me a lot of headache. 
So know about this. You need to have that disabled. All right, number seven, save the settings and let it reboot back into BIOS. Just save it, it'll reboot, and you just power it down. You make sure it comes back up into BIOS, then power it down. That's why you have no SATA drive. You don't want to try to boot up Windows or Linux or whatever you got on the, on the, uh, on the boot drive or the USB stick. All right, number eight. Dun, dun. Now we're getting there. Connect your third GPU to the third PCIe slot. Now power up. Before, I think the problem was it wouldn't recognize the third GPU. It recognized two. And I go, what is going on here? And again, this is the solution for that. Once you get three, you can then tether off three more. And it just pro solves the problem. Once you get over this hurdle, you can recognize up to six, mostly on uh, most BIOS. Depending on what freaking motherboard you got. If you got a specific mining B550 motherboard, you might not have any issues. It's designed to recognize multiple GPUs. This is just your generic motherboard, gaming motherboard, and stuff like that I'm playing. All right. Oh, where are we at? Number eight, connect your third GPU to the third PCIe slot. Power up. All right, where are we at? Number nine, you should boot into the BIOS. It should boot automatically into the BIOS. This is the key step. If it does, power down. All right, you knew it rebooted. It was fine. It recognized the third GPU. Problem is, before you connect a third GPU, in this case, to this motherboard, it wouldn't even boot up. It's like, ah, I'm confused. It was, it was just confused by what to do with that device sitting in that third PCIe slot. It was just, I think it was trying to boot from it. I don't know, maybe I thought it was a boot computer. I don't know. But anyway, that. The previous steps solve that. So by rebooting, and it came up into BIOS, mean, hey, I got the card in, uh, plugged into the PCIe slot. It came into BIOS, all very good. All right, it should boot in the BIOS. That's the key step. If it does, power it down. All right, let's go to number 10, number 10. What do we got? Uh, connect your SATA drive to the motherboard, power up. Whatever drive, your boot drive. Connect your boot drive to the motherboard. And then power back up. Basically, just plug it back in and let's go. Now what happens as you power back up, uh, don't even try to get into BIOS. It should bypass BIOS and it should finally boot into Windows or Linux or whatever's on your boot drive. You get it? You understand that? All right. We're almost done, guys. We're almost done. Hang in there. You made it this far, you nerds. We almost got to the bottom of this. But all right, I'll keep, I was going to say real quick, Looking at this now, I wrote this over three years ago. Holy crap, how would I figure this out today? Write stuff down, write stuff down, put it in your notes file somewhere on a disk in a keep folder, back it up to a thumb drive, stick it in a safe, just so you have this crap. Because to go and reinvent this would take hours, if not a couple days to figure out, how did I do this? It's amazing. Sometimes you're brilliant for like small periods in the day and you figure crap out. Other times like, how am I going to recreate that? It's like the idiots at NASA losing all the uh, moon landing stuff because <laughs> you never went to the moon, right? But how are you going to recreate that? They lost all that information. Give me a break. All right. Same thing. Just write it down, save it. You're good to go for future reference. Again, it may change. It may be different. But again, this gets you in the ballpark. Of, oh, yeah, I got to go in and I got to configure this, this, and this. Gotcha. All right. And it's a troubleshooting guide as well. Unplug stuff. What works? What doesn't work? Does it boot back up now that I plugged in the cart? Oh, it does. That means I'm good to go with the Windows boot. Get it? It's all a uh, critical thinking, how to troubleshoot, get stuff up and running. All right, what are we doing? 11, it should boot into Windows. Considering, uh, I'm, I'm assuming you have a, a valid bootable Windows drive. I'm not going to go into that. That's another video I made, how to make a bootable SATA drive, whatever. Uh, I am two form factor card bootable SD drive as well. All the same. That's on you. It's in another video. Go search my videos and watch it multiple times. All right. Once we are up in Windows, now, now this is Microsoft Windows 10 specific. What well, Windows specific? Number 12, go to Device Manager. Look at the display adapters under Device Manager. You can just go into the little command bar at the bottom of Windows, type device, and it should kind of give you an option to pick Device Manager, launch it. And then you will see that come up as a little window and you can look for the display adapters. You should now see, once you expand it, once you expand the display adapters, you should now see all three of your GPUs 
And as I went further, I was able to see six GPUs. All right. Now, once it recognizes them, you can even bring up the MSI Afterburner, and it should see all the three GPUs. In my case, <clears throat> I actually am mixing here. This is a great example. I mixed an NVIDIA card with two AMDs. Those are 6600 XTs. One was a 3060 Ti, pretty beefy card, and two AMD 6600 XT. So I have AMD drivers installed, and I have NVIDIA drivers, and it picked it right up in the uh, device manager. All right, MSI Afterburner is another video. That is an overclocking tool. You can go Google MSI Afterburner download if you want to play with that. That's a way to set your GPUs to a specific algorithm for GPU mining. But be careful, read the instructions. Uh, each algorithm has its own specific settings per card. That's a whole nother class, a whole nother lesson. Uh, whatever alg algorithm your GPU mining, each one has uh, its own settings based on the actual card, NVIDIA or AMD. And if it's a 3080, 3060, 3070, blah, 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 1660, or a 6600 XT, they all have specific overclock settings that people have figured out work best uh, for that algorithm. So that's another whole rabbit hole to go down and figure that out. Uh, again, there's a lot to learn in this ecosystem of mining. From CPU mining to GPU mining, a lot to learn in the domain space. It's not just plug and play. You, uh, you got to tweak it. Most times, if you just plug a GPU and start mining an algorithm, the thing may run hot. It may not be uh, optimized, and it's just not good for the GPU, and you're not getting the best hash rate on that GPU. So, yeah, make a note. Uh, once I'm up and running with my components, CPU, GPUs, I need to now say, what algorithm am I going to mine, and what are the... Uh, overclock settings recommended for that algorithm for the actual card and which drivers now it gets even better which driver say nvidia which version of the nvidia driver is best for that card it may not be the latest or greatest it may be a year ago this is the best optimized driver to run against a pow ethereum at the day whatever you know what i mean there's a lot to it it's again it's a whole like i said it's a whole system engineering configuration exercise and if you can do this you can go get a freaking job working as a contract 200,000 bucks a year I'm telling you that's the secret sauce right all right ah uh, so we did the FS MSI afterburner number 14 we're almost done if this did not work star start it should be start oh I got a typo start start by powering down unplug power cord and clear your CMOS or remove the CMOS battery for a few minutes, then, <laughs> here it is, man. 14 is, oh, the unF button. It did not work. So 14 is, I gotta do this again. Something did not quite kick in. If I don't see the device manager has my GPUs, if MSI Aftermath doesn't see my GPUs, mainly number 12. If you don't see your um, GPUs in number 12, you need to look at 14 and flush your BIOS. You need to go and uh, clear your CMOS, there may be a jumper or a little button sometimes on the mother where they have a little round button you push boop, and if it, it clears your CMOS or there's actually jumpers, two pins, you can kind of short out with a little um, uh, small screwdriver or a pen and uh, that'll clear the CMOS or you simply pop out that round flat battery for a few minutes and then that will actually uh, clear the CMOS. Unplug all the power too, pull the power cable out, power supply, let it just the gauss let all the electrons be free go back to their their maker and uh become better people but uh, 14 is the let's redo this from scratch let's flush everything and do it again uh let's see Ooh, and here was my uh here was my action item number 15 number 15 guys next uh i'm going to try to add a fourth amd 6600 xt i need a power cable splitter first stay tuned yeah so this time I had the hardware, but I didn't have the, a, a splitter to run off the power supply. And, uh, and I know on this rig, I'm remembering which rig this was. Uh, I ended up making this uh, a mix of 6600s and NVIDIA cards as well, 3060s. And in the end, it became a completely uh, specific AMD 6600 XT rig. I kind of ended up making all my rigs have all the same type GPUs 
and one rig I had, oh my god, the 3080 Ti rig from hell. That uh, that sucked a lot of power. It was a huge system engineering exercise and power management, heat management, uh, form factor, uh, noise. Oh my god, yeah, that was a beast. Six 3080 Ti's burning hot. Had to uh, add copper shims to them to keep the temperatures down. That was a whole nother video. I, I think I made a video that years ago. What a what a mess. But you do learn. You learn on the fly. If you have any brains, you'll figure it out. But you need a little guidance now too, right? So anyway, I hope this helped. This is kind of a deep dive, pretty boring for most people, but it gives you an idea of what I did and how to troubleshoot and learn on how to play with some of this hardware in mining and just making a gaming PC as well or a uh, development machine as well. It's all there. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Hey, do me a favor for the algorithm right below anything. Hey, BIOS rules or go GPU. Just put something in the comments. It helps the algorithm. Do a like, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. I am not monetized. I do this for fun. And if it helps anybody, that's how you pay me back. All right, go forth. Yeah, go forth. Do great things, guys.